and welcome to Mouse in the Mitten Trivia Pod, a podcast where you can test your Disney trivia knowledge over a variety of topics. My name's Court and I will be your host. Our game will consist of five rounds of six questions covering everything from your basic Disney knowledge to some unknown facts. Each question is worth one point unless otherwise noted. Make sure you follow us on social media at Mouse in the Mitten on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you're watching us over on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe, turn on that bell for notifications, give us video a thumbs up, and in the comments down below, let us know what your score is. Now, Disney is always changing. We saw the rollout of the new Lightning Lane system last week, and sometimes it's some rough waters that we have to try to navigate. If you want someone to be able to help you navigate those waters and make it the most magical vacation that it could possibly be, feel free to reach out to me at mouseinthemitten at gmail.com. We can get you all taken care of. Now, this week, we're going to focus a lot on some movie anniversaries. We're going to talk about three, I would say, or at least one iconic movie one historical just awesome movie and one that as a person born in the 80s lives in my heart forever and ever so we're going to start out round one by talking about alice in wonderland the crazy film that is just bonkers all over the place hard to follow but at the end of the day is still quite charming so let's get started with question number one within two what year did alice in wonderland make its debut in the u.s Question number two. What character is known to appear and disappear, oftentimes with a smile and a distinguished cackle? Question number three. Who does Alice chase after and often complains that he is late? Question number four. What fraction is on the card in the hat of the Mad Hatter? Is it six fifths, nine eighths, ten sixths, or twenty sixteenths? Question number five. When Alice meets the Queen of Hearts, what lawn game does the Queen invite Alice to play against her? And question number six. What does Alice in Wonderland have more of than any other Disney feature animation? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, and then I will return to give you all those answers. some answers here on Alice in Wonderland. So question number one. Within two, what year did Alice in Wonderland make its debut in the U.S.? Well, it debuted on July 28th, 1951. So in order to get the point there, you would have to say between 1949 and 1953. Now, the story goes that Walt originally wanted this to be the original. This one was supposed to be the first Disney animated film that was going to be released by Disney before Snow White. He decided to kind of go that route and then decide to shelf it for snow white and he picked it back up about 10 years later and decided alice in wonderland was the route they wanted to go and i think it was a good thing just kind of let it marinate for a little bit and definitely the end product was worth it question number two what character is known to appear and disappear oftentimes with a smile and a distinguished cackle that is the cheshire cat now personal opinion the cheshire cat tail is delicious if you ever get the opportunity to try one it is delicious it's over by the mad tea party ride 10 out of 10 would recommend it can be dry at times so try to get it as fresh as you can but it's still very good but that is a distinct a distinguished cackle that smile everything else like that and it's just one of those things that once you see it you know exactly where it came from question number three who does Alice chase after and often complains that he is late? Well, that is the White Rabbit. He oftentimes he has that clock in his hand. He complains that he's late, that he's going to be late, that he has to get going. And we later find out that his watch is actually two days slow, which just one of the one of the funny things about that movie. So it is a cool little thing, and we eventually he finds his way. <laughs> Question number four. What fraction is on the card that is in the hat of the Mad Hatter? Is it six fifths, nine eighths, ten sixths, or twenty sixteenths? It is 
10 6 so you have the 10 slash 6 that's in a card that is in the mad hatter's hat it's supposed to be a part of an equation that is irrational hence the reason why the mad hatter himself is irrational as well they're all mad cheshire cat reminded us they are all mad question number five when alice meets the queen of hearts what lawn game does the queen invite Alice to play against her? Well, that is croquet. They have all the flamingos and all the birds trying to play, and then all the cards are the little stakes, and they, you know, they move for the queen so she can win, and they move so Alice can't win because then Alice can stay with the queen and forever work for her and everything else like that. Again, this movie is all over the place. It's a combination of Alice in Wonderland and Alice through the Looking Glass, so that's why there's so many things. And that will kind of lead us into question number six. What does Alice in Wonderland have more of than any other Disney feature animated movie? Well, in order to get the point there, it would have to say either characters or songs. I'd give you the point for either of them. If you named both, give yourself a bonus point. There are more characters in Alice in Wonderland than any other Disney animated feature. And same thing with songs. There, It seems like every 30 seconds, there's a new song that is sung to describe what's going on or what's happening. And with each new song comes a new character. It, and it's it all that's why it's so kind of all over the place a little bit a little bit cra crazy a little bit chaotic but at the end again a very charming movie one that if you've been to the infant care center in disney world the first 15 minutes are ingrained in your mind but definitely a classic one and they saw a lot of success when they re-released it in the 70s and we continue to see it live in lore as we continue to grow older Continuing on now into round number two. Round number two is our fast facts round. For this round, they will have simple questions that are simple answers. Today's category is Disney World Resorts. For this round, what's going to happen is I'm going to give you the name of a Disney World Resort. You just have to say if that resort is a value resort, a moderate resort, or a deluxe resort. So basically a reminder that a value resort these ones are where you get your better value you get your better bang for the buck moderate is kind of your middle tier and then deluxe is your higher end a little bit more expensive resort options down in disney world so let's get started with question number one all-star music question number two coronado springs question number three grand floridian Question number four, Riviera Resort. Question number five, Art of Animation. And question number six, Caribbean Beach Resort. Now, again, some of these are great value. Some of them are in the middle. Some of them are some higher end resorts, but all of them have that Disney magic and that Disney charm. So let's get started with question number one. All-Star Music, well, that is a value resort, whether it's All-Star Music, movies, or sports, all of those are values. Those are a lot of fun. I really enjoy them. They have multiple pools. The dining area is really fun. They have, they have games. They have activities throughout the day. It, for me, I love them. They're a lot of fun. Question number two. Coronado Springs, that is a moderate resort. A little bit bigger. They have a little bit of a higher um, elevated staff they have uh, more comfortable beds maybe a couple of other little posh things but it's still it's a little bit more elevated than your value resorts question number three grand floridian well that is the deluxe you are paying for the grand floridian and the great experience that comes with it the rooms are fantastic the proximity to magic kingdom is fantastic you could take a boat right to magic kingdom or you could take the monorail so many really cool features this is the place that when bob is in town this is where he stays question number four Riviera Resort, that is a deluxe resort. They have a lot of options. This one is part of the Disney Vacation Club. It's a lot of cool. It's really cool. It's really fun. If you ever get the opportunity, if you are on the Skyliner and you get a chance to check out Riviera, just go there and look around. It is beautiful. It is really, really cool to look through. Question number four, or number five. 
Art of Animation, that is a value resort. Now, when it comes to the value resort, this one is on the top there of the value resort options. It's right below all your moderate options, but it's a fantastic one. A lot of really great theming here. If you have a child who is absolutely in love with Finding Nemo or Cars or Lion King or Little Mermaid, this is the place to stay. It is fantastic. Last but not least, question number six. Caribbean Beach Resort. Well, that is a moderate resort. This is huge. It is a giant resort. It is so cool when you're taking the Skyliner over top of it. It's really cool to look at all the colors, how it's set up. It is a lot of fun. Now, some travel agents will try to say, well, if you want to stay within a certain budget, well, if we just take one last day here, we could stay at this resort. I want to make your vacation the most magical it can be. And that starts with the hotel and finding that proper balance between the resort and how many days you're in the parks and what parks you go to. So again, any questions, feel free to email me at mouse in the mitten and we can get you all taken care of. Continuing on now to round number three. Round number three is our connecting the circles round. For this round, I will give you five questions that may or may not be Disney related, but the answers do relate to each other somehow through Disney. And that's gonna be your sixth and final question is what is that connection between those answers? So let's get started here with question number one. When playing a sport, what is it called when an offensive player has two defensive players on them? Question number two. What 2006 movie is about the Texas Western men's basketball team's run to their championship in 1966, capitalized by the first time a team played all African-American players in a college basketball game? Question number three. In 2005, Shia LaBeouf played Francis We Met in a movie titled what? Question number four. What is the name of the movie that features Goofy after the Goofy movie and features Goofy and Max going to college together? Question number five. What Disney Channel original movie stars Andrew Lawrence, Cleo Thomas, and Wayne Brady and is about a blind high schooler who finds success in an unexpected sport? And question number six is, what is that connection? I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, see if you can connect those circles, and then I will return. All right, let's see if we can connect those circles. So question number one. When playing a sport, what is it called when an offensive player has two defensive players on them? That is double teamed. Now, sometimes you double team the best player. Sometimes you double team them to kind of take them out of the play. There's a lot of reasons why you would double team someone. But when one offensive player has two defenders on them, we call that double teamed. Question number two. What 2006 movie is about the Texas Western men's basketball team's run to their championship in 1966, capitalized by the first time a team played in all African-American players in a college basketball game? Well, that would be Glory Road, 1966 Texas Western basketball team featured seven African-American players that played the entire national championship game against Kentucky. And this is their story during that season. It is a remarkable movie. Question number three. In 2005, Shia LaBeouf played Francis We Met in the movie titled What? That is the greatest game ever played. In personal opinion, Shia LaBeouf did a fantastic job. It is a great movie. Even if you're not a golfer, it is a fun movie to watch. It's really cool to see the cultural implications as well. Question number four. What is the name of the movie that, movie that features Goofy after the Goofy movie and features Goofy and Max going to college together? That is an extremely goofy movie. Now, they call it an extremely goofy movie because they get into this into extreme sports, they get into skateboarding, that sort of stuff. It's a really cool movie. And, of course, Goofy finds the love of his life. Whatever happened to his first wife, we'll never know, but he apparently found the love of his life. Question number five. What Disney Channel original movie stars Andrew Lawrence, 
Cleo Thomas and Wayne Brady, and it's about a blind high schooler who finds success in an unexpected sport. That is going to the mat. Andrew Lawrence plays a blind student at a high school, trying to find his way through, trying to find a way to be able to fit in. Figures out that as a blind person, he can wrestle. And it's kind of a cool story. It's based on a true story. So it's really, really cool. And how he finds success, everything else like that. So it, it, it's a really good movie. If you get a chance, check it out. Last but not least, question number six is what is the connection? Well, we had answers such as Double Teamed, Glory Road, Greatest Game Ever Played, an extremely goofy movie, and Going to the Mat. The connection there, these are all Disney movies that feature an Olympic sport. The first one, Double Teamed, was women's basketball. Second one, Glory Road, men's basketball. Yes, I know both basketball kind of double dipped there. It's fine it's not that serious uh three greatest game ever played is about golf uh four extremely goofy movie about skateboarding number five going to the mat about wrestling so all these are current sports in the olympics and we've seen a couple of medals already handed out in skateboarding uh wrestling is going to continue to go on throughout the entire time a lot of good americans there same thing with basketball both men's and women's we have a fan fantastic team golf we have a couple of solid golfers as well olympics are going on right now we have olympic fever over here loved getting up at five o'clock in the morning to watch simone biles and the other gymnasts going crazy watching the swimmers i'm a track person i'm excited for next week as well so a lot of fun going on over in paris france right now Continuing on now into round number four, round number four is typically reserved for movie anniversaries. And as I mentioned at the top of this episode today, we have three movie anniversaries. This will be the second one, and this one is after my 90s baby heart, and this is all about the parent trap. I don't I don't know why I have this movie like ingrained in my mind. I think it's because I had a sister and she kind of ran the house, and this was one of her favorite movies when it came out. So I think that has something to do with it. It's also one of my wife's favorite movies. It's overall just a fun movie. It's a it's really great. And we're going to talk about the original. I mean, the newer version here, not the original. The original, also a classic. We're going to talk about the newer version. So let's get started here with question number one. What actress made her movie debut in The Parent Trap? Question number two. The original Parent Trap came out in 1961. Within two, what year did the newest version come out in the U.S.? Question number three. Name either Nick Parker or Liz James' job in The Parent Trap. Question number four. Leanne Walters played the housekeeper and nanny for Nick and Hallie. What is her name? Question number five. What boat is the location of the iconic picture that Hallie and Annie put together to show that they are twins? And question number six. Who plays the lost boy at camp and is the only boy at the all-girls camp? All right, I'm going to give you a few seconds worth of music, try to come up with those answers, and then I will return. Let's give you some answers here on The Parent Trap. So question number one. What actress made her movie debut in The Parent Trap? Well, that would be Lindsay Lohan. She played the twin girls in that movie. Technically, she had, I guess, like a small role in a movie about safety before that. But this was her kind of big movie debut. She had been in a show before The Parent Trap, but big movies. This was her debut. Question number two. The original Parent Trap came out in 1961. Within two, what year did the newest version come out in the U.S.? Well, that was July 29, 1998. So in order to get the answer there, what it had to say between 1996 and 2000. Again, kind of plays to my 90s baby nostalgia heart and probably explains why when it came out, it ran about a thousand times in our house, back to back to back to back to back and continu continuously. I feel like I have this movie pretty close to memorized at this point. <laughs> it just, it's burrowed in there. Question number three. 
Name either Nick Parker or Liz James Job in The Parent Trap. Well, Nick was a vineyard owner and Liz was a wedding gown designer. Now, both of these jobs were the same as in the 1961 movie as well as the book that this was based on as well. Now, locations, everything else like that, that's a little bit different, but this, it, those jobs were the same across the both movies and the book as well. Question number four. Leanne Walters played the housekeeper and nanny for Nick and Hallie. What is her name? Well, her name is Chessie. Now, if you had said Jesse, J-E-S-S-Y or however way you want to spell it, technically it's incorrect, but I think it was a huge revelation during COVID when everyone's like, oh, it's Chessie, C-H-E-S-S-Y. Little different, but that is technically her name is Chessie with a C-H at the beginning, not a J, but you know, doesn't add to her charm and charisma. Question number five. What boat is the location of the iconic picture that Hallie and Annie put together to show that they are twins? That is the Queen Elizabeth. That is where Nick and Liz originally got married. They got married on the Queen Elizabeth. It's that picture of them together. They try to recreate that on the date with the Queen Elizabeth II. Try to recreate the picture, everything else like that. This was the girl's attempt to try to get their parents back together. And question number six. Who plays the lost boy at camp and is the only boy at the all-girls camp? Well, that is Michael Lohan. If you had said Lindsay's brother, give yourself the point there as well. Same answer there. All of Lindsay's family members made brief appearances in the movie. Her mom and other sister were at one of the airport shots, um, but all of her family made brief appearances in this movie. Her brother was the only one who had a real speaking role, and he was the boy that was at the all-girls school. Now, it's again, it, this movie came out in 1998. If you have not checked it out lately, it is on Disney+. Plus. Check it out. Trust me, it will bring back all the nostalgia. Plus, it's just a lot of fun. Speaking of a lot of fun, round number five and our final round today is a movie that is nothing but fun. Round number five is going to be dedicated to Guardians of the Galaxy. With everything that came out this past weekend about Doctor Doom and the return of Tony Stark, a.k.a. Robert Downey Jr., I don't know how they're going to tie that all in. I just think we're just going to move on and say it's not Tony Stark, it's just Doctor Doom. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. This round is dedicated to Guardians of the Galaxy. So every question has to do with the Guardians movie, and this we're talking about the first one. So let's get started here with question number one. Within two, what year did Guardians of the Galaxy debut in the U.S.? Question number two. Who wrote and directed Guardians of the Galaxy? Question number three. At the beginning of the movie, what year does the movie start and subsequently when Peter Quill's mom passes? Question number four. Dave Batista plays Drax the Destroyer in his Marvel debut. Before being an actor, what did Batista do? Question number five. What role does Glenn Close play in Guardians? And question number six. Seen around the 55 minute mark, as well as the post credit scene, what Marvel character has yet to receive his own Marvel movie despite being in multiple Guardians movies? All right, I'm gonna give you a few seconds worth of music and then I will return to wrap up today's game. Let's give you some answers here on Guardians of the Galaxy. So question number one. Within two, what year did Guardians of the Galaxy debut in the U.S.? Well, that would be August 1st, 2014. So in order to get the point there, what it has to say between 2012 and 2016. Now, again, a great movie. They've since come out with, with three of them. They are planning on coming out with more. It's going to be interesting to see where this franchise goes from here and see how it's going to be involved in the multiverse. Question number two. 
Who wrote and directed Guardians of the Galaxy? Would that be James Gunn? They thought they didn't need him. He has kind of come back a little bit in a role, but definitely does a great job with this one and Volume 2. He was not there for Volume 3. It kind of showed a little bit, but definitely a fantastic actor and writer did a great job on Guardians. Question number three. At the beginning of the movie, what year does the movie start? And subsequently, when does Peter Quill's mom pass? Well, she passed in the movie starts in 1988. Now, easier for me to remember. That was the year I was born. But we could see it at the very beginning of the movie. It says the year 1988. It's, cool. it's a sad beginning, but it helps to explain everything else that happens. Question number four. Dave Batista played Drax the Destroyer in his Marvel debut. Before being an actor, what did Batista do? Well, he was a professional wrestler. Now, if you had said he had wrestled in the WWE, if you had said he had wrestled in MMA, give yourself the point. He was technically, he had was a champion in the WWE, everything else like that, but he did have a short stint in MMA as well, but... However you want to categorize that, you're correct. He is a fantastic actor. He has not only done Guardians, he's done a lot of other things. He has done a really good job. And it's really cool to kind of see his range a little bit as he's starting to expand some of those roles as well. Question number five. What role does Glenn Close play in Guardians? Well, he plays Irani Reale, leader of the Nova Corps, a.k.a. Nova Prime. Any one of those answers would have given you the point. Nova Prime... The leader of the Nova Corps gave yourself the point there. It's shock. It was shocking to see Glenn Close in this role because oftentimes those who are trying to get Academy Awards and that sort of stuff often don't play these sort of in these superhero movies because they don't usually get a lot of awards for them. But she proved she proved to kick that one wrong as she didn't have an award up to that point. She did win one later for Hillbilly Elegy and. Obviously, Robert Downey Jr. has won an award as well for his role in Oppenheimer, but it was really cool to see her, and it's the only Marvel movie that Glenn Close is in. Last but not least, question number six. Seen around the 55-minute mark, as well as the post credit scenes, what Marvel character is yet to receive his own Marvel movie, despite being in multiple Guardians movies? That is Howard the Duck. Sorry, this is not the dog. I love the Golden Retriever puppy. It is very cute. I love Golden Retrievers in general. Uh, but this is not the dog. This is Howard the Duck. Always cool to see him and see his antics. And seeing him in other roles as well in the Guardians um, trilogy as well as some of the other guardian specials they put out it leads me to think they're going to do something but at the same point he has no role in anything else so i don't know it's going to be interesting to see what happens but again if you haven't seen guardians in a minute check it out it's always fun two and three are fantastic as well just always for a good laugh well i want to thank you for tuning in this week i will return next week with more questions and more fun make sure you're following us on instagram facebook and tiktok at mouse in the mitten if you're watching us over on youtube again make sure you subscribe hit that bell for notifications so that way you know every time we upload a new episode give us a thumbs up and in the comments down below let us know what your score is if you're listening to us make sure you follow us on apple Podcasts, download us wherever else you can leave a five-star review wherever you can as well that will help to promote the show as well and again there are a lot of changes and a lot of small details that make your disney vacation fantastic if you need help navigating those feel free to email me at mouse in the mitten at gmail.com we can get you all taken care of and all squared away well hey my name is court the dog's name is milo i appreciate you tuning in and i will see you next time